morning guys welcome back to the channel if you are new to the channel smash the link in the corner and don't forget to subscribe so ooh, up, up here so what we're going to do today we're back on this rewire job it is absolutely boiling um, it is just gone eight o'clock I've already done some running around to the merchants so we just turned up on site and it's roasting so first things first get all the windows open um, so with the plan for today after I've opened all the house up uh, is we're going to get on with all the chasing so hopefully what I'm going to try and achieve by the end of today is to get all the chasing done so I, and all the back boxes in and all that stuff sorted because then really in theory the majority of it the messy stuff is done uh, and then we're going to get to ch start running some cables so downstairs is pretty much sorted with all the chases but it's hard going very very hard going um so yeah so that's the plan for today so we're going to get set up jack has literally just nipped down the road to the shop to go get some milk so we can have a cup of tea so we'll get set up and uh we'll catch up with you in a minute right i thought i'd show you i'll share a little tip with you um so chasing these back boxes out um they've some of the bricks are good some are not some are rock hard some aren't like over here in this corner over here um those two sockets there uh, the brickwork behind it just moved uh, it's a nine inch wall so that's pushed all the way back so that was a nightmare um so what i've said to jack because we were grinding these ones out using the Metabo, which is fine. And then we thought, do you know what? Let's see if we can just use the uh, like the drill and chase method. Um, so we did it on that one, and that has blown. So it just goes to show that obviously there's low. Not one method does all. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work. Um, so what I was going to show you anyway, like this one here, this socket down here. They want a USB on there, so we need to put a 35 mil uh, back box in, uh, or knockout, whatever you want to call metal clad. Um, so, to so what we're going to use is a drill method again. We're going to try that. So I don't know whether you can see that, but I've actually drew a pen line all the way around. I mean, you can use tape, but what I found with using tape, for some reason, it ends up either moving down or for sliding further back. Um, so it's always been a bit of a pain. So I, I stopped doing that quite a while ago uh, and just went to using a bit of like a Sharpie. That's all essentially I use. Mark that on there and then hopefully I can show you if I put you there. Sorry guys. So, so all I essentially do It's drilled down to that pen line. Now there's no reason why that can't move anywhere, can't go go anywhere. So what I'll do now is just drill, keep drilling all the way around, multiple holes at that depth, and then I'll use the um, the spade bit in there and just chop the rest of it out. Now because because these are older bricks, then it's and the plaster's pretty much had it really some places it's okay but a lot of it is just crumbly and just, it just dries out um so you just try your best now if i just use the the spade bit on here the spade chisel piece and instead of using the metabo i would guarantee that half of this plaster would have just fell off the walls so ultimately you know we've we've said look we're doing the repairs so within reason Obviously, if it's all going to fall off the wall, there's nothing you can do about that. That's obviously completely different. But but that's what you try and do. Try and keep your damage to a minimum. So I just thought I'd share that little tip with you. Jack is now, he's going upstairs and started on all the chases upstairs. So in the conservatory, we've just started uh, doing that chase there, but we're going to use our prescribed zones and do it across, it, up the top, across there and then into that bedroom to pick up the feeds and I mentioned in the video that I did yesterday 
about bringing some armoured on the outside but I think if I do a double chase up there then I'll be able to bring it down into that corner and then into the garage that way which is so eliminate having any cables outside um, so yeah I so just wanted to share that little tip with you so like I say use a sharpie don't bother with the tape because uh, it just it, it, as my experience like I say leave your comments below if you uh, if you do it any other way and it's all good um, but for me always moved I wouldn't actually say that I wonder whether it's because on, the, on your drill bit, there's grit and there's dust and stuff like that so that's probably why it moves so there you go Right, so you can see from that that it's nice and flat in there now and like you say you can see that the plaster here is all fractured that's all going to come off so we'll pull that off anyway but that just proves the point so you're probably a bit dusty hold on there you go um, that just proves the point that if we had done that chase all the way up and just I don't know whether you can see that properly so you can see on there so that spider crack there that's just going to fall off. See? So that is what would happen all the way up the wall, all the way up to the ceiling on every wall if we didn't use that, that wall chaser. Um, so with that there, like I say, these bricks are a bit weird. One minute they're rock hard, the next minute they're all quite brittle. Uh, and they're, obviously it's very dry, all the mortar and everything like that. But you know, so you just do your best and then the bonding will pick up the rest. Um, so what I also do is just put a little dustpan underneath to collect the majority of it. There is a socket underneath that that's, that's still got, uh, that's still live at the minute. So that's our temporary supply at the minute. There's that one and the one the other side of the settee. Um, so now what I'll do from this point on is drill all my banding from a banding strap. Uh, and I'll just show you how quickly I'll, I'll go about doing that as well. Right, I'm going to try and do this one handed because Jack's too busy upstairs, get cracking on. So, on this chase here, <coughs> what I'm going to do is roughly going to put four uh, banding straps to hold the oval conduit in, uh, in one go. So what I'll do is I'll try and film it as we're doing it. Um, so I won't do them all because it's too awkward. So just put your red plug in. And then you get your banding strap uh, and there's six holes on this one I've used different banding strap that's thicker and all the rest of it but this particular size needs to be roughly three inches something like that and then I'm going to try and do this all one-handed if I can so essentially what you're gonna have is so if you hold it flat like that so normally They're coming in. This is not going to work, I don't think. So if you're holding it out like that, and you're screwing it in, sorry for the dreadful camera work. So, so you screw it in like that. I preferably level would be better. Um, obviously, like I say, one-handed bit awkward. Okay, so essentially, a bit like that, then use your, your chisel, push it into the corner, push it into that corner, and then that creates the U, and you haven't got to preform it. I mean, some people say, oh yeah, you can preform it, but 
I find when you've got two hands to do it, it's a lot easier doing that way. So I just put my four in. We're going to drill behind the clothing up there. And then that's this chase done. Um, so what I'll do, like I say, I'll crack on. And I'll, uh, next time you see, we'll probably go upstairs and check on Jack, see what he's been up to. Right, it's been a little bit now. We've got um, the chases done over there. Oh my God, how much better is it to chase on some block walls? Oh, dreamy. So I was just go upstairs, go and check, see what Jack's been up to. Um, I think he's got a little rave on up here. Hold on, copyright, gotta turn the radio on. Right, that's the radio dealt with. Where, where are you, Jack? I'm in here. I'm here. So he's in the study, doing some studying. How are you getting on? Uh, just trying to figure out where to move that. I'll move the desk. Yeah. Where are the sockets going? The one there. Well, they said they wanted on on here. There's, yeah. You see, there's five, but then these two are squiggled out. So I don't know if they want five or th it's only three. Three, I'd say. Yeah. Somewhere. So I'll put three underneath there. Okay. Don't know about spacings yet. I'll just space them with the um, boat level. Gotcha. Uh, it's probably about right there, isn't it? Hmm. So is this, this one having one as well? Yeah. Okay, so one of the logistical problems that we have, obviously with, there is furniture in here, so you have to keep shifting stuff around. This isn't too bad, to be honest, because the customers have been brilliant and they have really took a lot of stuff out uh, and relocated it, should I say, um, which is great. So it uh, makes a big difference, but you do, ultimately, when you've got a house that's lived, I say lived in, it's unoccupied at the minute, but it's an occupied house, isn't it, let's be honest, because you've got all the furniture, everything's in here, so we just have to, you just have to shimmy stuff about. Now the carpets in here, we're lucky again, because we've been told, reliably informed, that we can cut the carpets, do whatever we want to, and if they're in the way, just cut them out, um, it's not really a big deal. So it looks like to me, so Jack's done all the chases and stuff, uh, or the cuts and stuff are there. Now, I think that might be our way up to the loft, that one. Um, because they've been cut right next to the, the the joist there, the timber work, sorry, the stud work, I'll show you a little trick on how to fit the uh, dry liners on there. Um, but yeah, so we'll just have a little run through where Jack's been, the old wreck it, Ralph. Um, so yeah, so he's got his chase and stuff up to here. Obviously the chasing machine is only going so far, so we'll just finish the rest of that lower down. But this is what we're saying about the plaster. I mean, the plaster work in here, it was all covered with uh, wallpaper. Um, and the homeowners have um, stripped all that off, but it, obviously with that, it uncovers a lot of gnarly plaster work, which is pretty much had it. So what we'll, do is we'll be looking into uh, how bad they are um, so yeah so with this so what we're going to do because we need to get into that corner that fitted furniture I think we'll try and remove the drawers and see if we can go underneath because a lot of these they don't have an actual bottom in them so if we can take those drawers out without removing the fitted furniture itself, that'd be fantastic. But the same with this, this is obviously a fitted wardrobe. You're not gonna move that. I mean, that would be mental to think you're gonna do that. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're at. So Jack's been cracking on, to be fair to him. Um, like I said, trying to get Jack to learn from mistakes and stuff. Um, it's like this one here. It's, probably doesn't need that chase up to there because that light switch there is not a few spur and just forgetting that that's going to be coming up from up there but whoa just notice that that plaster is just going to fall off um so yeah so it's just learning from these mistakes and part of that is because i'm cracking on downstairs and i'm not watchful eye um but you know it's fine it's bonding and like i said that walls it's all experience in it so um but yeah so we're gonna have a bite to eat in a minute because i'm absolutely starving starving so we'll catch you in after I've had something to eat so it's just dawned on me that because I've been listening to music and stuff that I've just been singing away <laughs> what I call singing anyway all day and Jack says all I can hear is ah! really random stuff 
So it's quite amusing because obviously I don't know all the words. Just I just make it up as I go along. Why, why should I bother? So anyone walking past the street because the pavement's just down there, I bet they've had a right old giggle. So hope you enjoyed it. So I just thought I'd have a little update. It's absolutely boiling. Uh, oh Jesus Christ! It is so hot. Um, for those of you who watch it in the states. Um, nothing this is obviously hotter here than over yours so my sister lives in the states as well and she's always moaning that it's it's red hot it's red hot don't move there then so jack's been round he's now downstairs undoing all the old accessories and things like that, getting rid of all those now so what one of the weird things we've found that this is actually a stud wall it's about a foot void behind there for some reason i don't really know why um so we've done all the chasing and stuff down there and I just thought I'd just show you this little setup now this is a USB so you know I said earlier on about we foam where if all the bricks and stuff are all broken that's basically what I've done so don't foam it all the way to the front because if you do that you're gonna have to just dig it out anyway for bonding so what I do is so I've got one good fix in there and the rest of it is all smashed to pieces so what I'd normally do is just get the foam gun through that hole and fill it so what then happens then it all expands behind the back and it all binds together and grabs in now once that's gone off that's not going anywhere i don't care what anyone says that is not going anywhere it's not moving it's not going to fall out so any of you going oh that's a right old bodge it's not it's designed to it's, it's an adhesive as well so just saying so calm yourselves down it's all right we're all gonna we're all gonna get through this together so like i say use the bucket the bucket the dustpan dustpan underneath there scrape all so you can just get the majority of it but i tell you what i must be getting old i'm just getting really really my knees are killing me i do need surgery on one of my knees but it's actually the other one <laughs> well, the other one that's actually hurting more so yeah so basically that's going that's deeper that one because it had like you said i can keep this in there's nothing wrong with that that's fine these are all coming out there is a false floor in the bottom of this so which is great news because i can just cut a hole in the bottom feed my cables up through the back uh the conservatory is just down there so i need to come up this way out for your garage feed as well so that kills all that so the problem is i've got to get some accessories on the wall underneath there and I don't think that has got a false floor in it. Well, it has, but I can't get to it, if that makes any sense, without cutting the um, wardrobe. And I'm not going to do that. So that that one's going to be, the socket that's below there is going to be a bit more of a headache. But luckily enough, well, luckily enough, I can. there is ways around it, but not the way we've planned. So, so yeah, so like I say, Jack's just gone round, he's chased most of the other stuff out. So what, what I'm doing is Jack's doing the chases up the wall, hence the reason like these. And then what I'm doing is following round behind him, if you know what I mean, um, just to do the actual knockouts, get them fitted. Because in essence, sometimes with, not just jack to be fair there's anybody can do it it's sometimes when they're mounted if you're not careful they can on exaggerated terms sit like that and it's once it's plastered it's too far it's nothing i can do about it other than chop it out and do it again so i'm very conscious of trying to uh, make that right so, so what i said to jack is when he's doing his marking out what he's tended to do and this isn't this isn't a massive criticism on jack it's just because he's learning that what he would do is literally just draw around the box that's all he'd do so what i've said to jack is just just extend your lines at least one level line that's all you need to do because if you can extend it then you've always got that guide it doesn't matter if it's like i said that it's about 500 wide that that line on there it doesn't matter in this in this job it's all going to be plastered it doesn't matter so i can understand if you're it's already a finished article as such and it's like a stud wall and you just you just use the oscillator and, and that's fine i understand that but in this instance it really doesn't matter and the brickwork a lot of these upstairs are just breaking so there's not a lot that you can do about it other than just give clear reference points on there so like I, said, I hope these tips help people um if it doesn't cheers for watching anyway you know um 
the other thing is, is it's really important that um, it's just I know I know it's a bit of a pain in the arse but like PPE I'm not the world's greatest right I'm not I'm not the world's greatest so don't ever think that I'm, you're going to see me in every video and I've got all the PPE on and stuff because I, I won't have I just won't I'm not going to lie just won't do it um, because I'm just busy and you know it's like an idiot really but on here like I said when you're doing a chasing it's just really important I've I've had a bit of brick stuck in my eye from when I was doing some work at home rushing and if you've ever experienced that of them getting that out of your eye with a needle and telling you that if you move they're gonna make you blind I tell you now putting a two pound pair of glasses on is nothing um, so yeah so just make sure you the so kids make sure you watch your, you're wearing your, your glasses all right right while we're having a quick break because it's absolutely boiling I don't know whether I've mentioned that already I thought we should have a little natter the clients actually just turned up as well just to uh, come and pop his head in and say hello um, and he was just wondering why that socket was up on the fireplace because that's not where they want it Jack so if you watch the previous video, you'll know why that's on there. We don't want to talk about it too much, but um, but he, I, I smoothed it over. He was okay. Mm -hmm. So um, so yes, they do want the socket inside the fireplace, don't they? So they just for a little um, decorative light. But me and Jack thought we'll just have a quick bite to eat, and um, I'm a bit of a natter really, I suppose, because it's it's just. Oh, obviously with chasing and stuff it's hard work because you are constantly just bang 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 so you you keep going and going and going so it is you, you do need to have a break and it upstairs is boiling as well isn't it so we've got all the windows open upstairs and it's still red hot um, so yeah so I just obviously I wanted to chat to Jack with you guys watching and stuff um, so yeah so that's what we, we thought we'd do so um, Jack what have you learnt today? Of a learn. Oh, um, that chasing sucks. Yeah, and okay. when it's hot, it sucks as well. It even sucks even more when it's hot. And because you've got shorts on, what goes in your boots? Lot <laughs> loads of stones. Yeah, so many stones. Like if I took my boots off now, you just like a gravel pit. Yeah. Uh, when you when you're setting out for sockets and stuff, and you you draw them all out, make the line longer. Yeah, it's easier to see. Because it's been all decorated in it, so it doesn't matter, and it's it easier matter, for yeah, chasing, yeah. isn't it? Because the thing is, is when you don't do that, and you've got, um, and you just just draw them around the back box, it's it, how quick does it just disappear? You yeah, know, it just it just with the plaster yeah. falling off, especially here, it just falls off. So it's a right pain. So trying to, so I'm glad you've took that on board because it's just it's, it's just a little tiny little tip in it, but it, it does make a big difference. So tool of the day for you? Oh, this. So that's uh, a little little Bosch. Was that a 10, 10 volt? Is it at the bottom? Yeah, 10, 10.8 volt. volt. I've had that. I was saying to Jack, I've had that for absolutely years and years and years, and it spent most of its life in my garage because I never really uh, I used it. I am going to buy one. It's wicked, isn't it? I'm so bad. It's really good because I, I keep that in in my. I've got a Vito bag, like that. Um, and I, I just keep it in there. Um, so for boards, changes, things like that, it's just it's light. Um, if you do any ICRs as well, I have put that in it, which is um, the Weha, 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 whatever, um, and in there. Just and then obviously you can just whip round all the accessories and just just blast them off. So that's a wicked bit of kit. That and to be honest, it's got some poke in it, isn't it? Oh well, yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. You know, it's so obviously Jack wants to buy one now, so um, so I don't know whether to like say with with that it's because it, I bought that as a twin pack, which is going off a bit a bit of random now. We've got an oscillator as well that that fits in, but the oscillator broke, and then I never got it sorted. And I think probably five or six years down the line, I reckon she's pretty much out of warranty. So of course, still yeah. got it. It just sits in the garage, um, but yeah, so. But yeah, that's a great little bit of kit, and especially if you are like like Jack, obviously an apprentice, you're a first year apprentice, isn't you, mate? You know, it's good to. I, I tell all the apprentices, not that they really listen, but I when I was doing my apprenticeship, 
I was always told to invest in yourself because it's the perfect time because you're you you obviously young you're living with your parents you've got disposable money so what my boss did because I my boss um, I said to me you buy me some tools or what you know because I was quite a cheeky very cheeky kid and uh, and my boss went yeah yeah no worries I'll get you something and so what he did he went and bought me one little screwdriver which was literally that it was like something out of a cracker it was that big <laughs> and I tell you now and he says that's the only bit of kit you'll get from me uh, and I've still got that I genuinely have still got that and uh, I never use it but it's just a little thing that from that day I, I realised that you've just got to invest in yourself. I mean obviously there's equipment that we wouldn't expect Jack to buy, you know, it's like the bloody wall chaser and things like that. I wouldn't expect that because it's, mm. I mean, it's just, I mean if you want a Jack then fill your boots. Because also you can't have double up on everything in the van, so because the van's only so big and anyone knows me, I'm a bit of a tall tart anyway. So. Um, but things like your hand tools, isn't it, mate? You know, yeah. it, what I tend to find is is it other stuff that Jack's borrowing off me quite a lot. They're the things that you'd say, well, just go and buy, just try and buy one of those yourself, or you know, once a month because we we pay monthly in it for for you guys. So at the end of the month, just invest in something, even if it's just a pair of cutters or something like that. But we generally kick you out pretty well, don't we, mate? Oh yeah, I'd say. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because I've got some Dewalt stuff that I've said to Jack look treat it as if it's your own um, until it breaks because it's it's out of warranty but you tend to still grab all the other stuff don't you really but yeah. but it does help doesn't it so yeah so it's a bit of a um, bit of a top tip there just invest in your in yourself because ultimately once you start getting proficient in your own tools it's um, it's a lot easier isn't it yeah. yeah. So if I was said to you, Jack, you can have one bit of kit, one bit of kit out of my van, and that's it. You can use yours. What would you have? Oh, that's a good question. Good question, isn't that? Uh, uh, I tough one, isn't it? Yeah. You see, like electrical kit or just like anything. anything. Literally anything. You, I could say to you, look, it's your birthday. Treat yourself. Choose anything out of there. What would you go with? I, um, I don't know. That's a question. It is a question. Yeah. Um. What so what if I reword that? Because what what was what would you say that you use the most on a daily basis of of my stuff? Uh. That. Or. Uh, I'll just take your old bag. <laughs> just take the old bag. Why not? I've, I've done. Because yeah. <laughs> so, so the old bag. But it's it's that's the thing, right? I'll show you this quickly, and this is not because you know I'm endorsed or anything. Because I'm not. But I bought. I had the smaller version. I can't remember what it was now. Of the Vito, and then I Steve wanted that, so I said, well, I could do with something a little bit bigger. So I bought that one, which is the Vito Pro Pack. And it is wicked. It is, yeah, I like it. It is such a good good thing because I do the plumbing as well on the company. I generally try and keep you know electrical and plumbing one side and the other, although I've got another plumbing bag in there. Um, but in the van, like, but it's it's brilliant. But I would say for you, Jack, I would say the one of the most common things that you would use is cable strippers. Cable strippers yeah, because they you use them a lot. Don't yeah. Because down lights, things like that. I generally get Jack to do all the down lights now, wiring those in, because you've got those down to a fine art now. Yeah, I do enjoy that too. Yeah, it's, and it's a nice little job that you can easily do. Um, so cable strippers are a good one if you're an apprentice starting out, um, which are, this is this video is going way off topic now, but, mm. but that's those. So these are Klein Tools ones, and I'm gonna be honest, I was always a bit skeptical about using these. But wicked. You start rattling through some down lights using those, you will absolutely smash them out. I mean, I was fairly quick before, but then using these, because the ones we use are all like just a push connectors, aren't they? So yeah. a bit like the like way goes. Yeah. They so they're rapid. So yeah, so I'd say say that. And the thing is, is getting used to using the tester, isn't it? 
I oh, think that's yeah. the, the other thing is getting used to using the tester because I've got the I think it's an MFT which is the Mega MFT 1741 maybe something like that and I've got the next one down from that as well but that needs to be repaired but I said to Jack I could do with getting that repaired and then saying Jack you use that one just so you're getting more and more proficient in, in using that knit yeah. on there I'd say but yeah so when are we going to get this job finished Jack? Um, I think it will just go I think it will smash it out after we do get all these chases done yeah, I think it will just go the past smoothly after that. Right? I hope so. Normally we do it the other way around, don't we? We normally run all the cables yeah. first and then do all the chasing, but we've decided to sort of flip it around on its head this time and go. Do you know what? We're going to do all the chasing first, get all the grotty, horrible stuff, rather than dreading the looking like forward for that. Is we've done it the other way and just come in and in, just in the long run. Better, long right? run, I think it's going to be better. Yeah, I, I, do, do you know what? I, in the 15 years of doing this on my own, I've never done it this way. And to be honest, it's, it's quite good. I, I prefer it, so. So yeah, so that's what the plan is. So we, we like to say, with all that, as you've seen in the video, we're putting all the banding strap in, ready to, to hold everything. So it is a case of cables in, straight down, banding strap on, done, ready for, like I say, we'll be doing the plastering anyway, but if you weren't doing the plastering, it's ready for them. You can just crack on and, and you know, bugger off to your next job and come back and doing second fix. Um, <coughs> so yeah, so I thought we'd have a little natter with you on there. So what else would you, what would you like to learn more of, Jack? In terms of what? In terms of? The job in general. What uh, would you like to learn more of or more experience of? I'd like to do more testing yeah. on, the, on the tester. Okay. Because I, mean, I, I, I think it's I think it's quite fun to be fair. On the, on I like the testing. I like it. Yeah. Uh, and then non-electric was plastering. Yeah, you want to get yeah. more of it? Yes. That's happy days. Because Kian does, because with our other apprentices, we try and do it so they've got like almost like a secondary trade as such. So Kian and Lewis, are, Lewis is qualified now. Or he's just got one little module to finish off. but um, And then he gets his new van as his little bit of a billy bonus uh, whenever that turns up. So he had on order for like eight months Ford. So... Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so once, so we try and get, so they're bricklaying apprentices, um, but then Lewis is more going into the carpentry side of doing that, and then obviously the, the company, and then Kian has decided to do plastering uh, on there, because we try and get them to be proficient in something else, um, just because it's just better for them and us as a company, but that's what we like to do. Um, but yeah, the testing is good though, isn't it? I enjoy doing testing. Yeah. It's like we did that AICR the other day. It's, it's good. And it's, like I say, but it's hard for me to let go. And I think that's the, the key, yeah. isn't it? It's just letting go. And it's, it's sometimes, I'm just saying, learning from your mistakes. Um, have I ever shouted at you, Jack? No. Not yet. Give it time. No, I don't really, do I? I mean, no. it's, you know, we all make mistakes. I think, I think you've never done anything and not... I think it would be different if Jack made a mistake and it was it was all like you know whatever i don't really care yeah um but i think no matter what i would say jack would beat himself up more than more than what what i would actually tell him off anyway so so i know that it play on jack's mind when he's done something wrong which is basically every five minutes um i don't really want to make him feel awkward because he's standing there but it is literally every Time I turn round, he's ruined something else. So I just have to draw it to it. That's basically right? falling down, isn't it? It is really, and I, yeah. it's a wonder I'm not dead yet. To be fair, yeah. um, but you know, on that note, no, but uh, so what we do because, like I say, pretty much the this is just chasing, chasing, chasing. So I thought we'd just end it really here on a bit of a random chat again. Uh, they seem to be coming thick and fast. These random chats, yeah, right? yeah. But, uh, yeah. I've, yeah. So the they seem to be more and more like this and like I say if you like them then obviously just leave it in your comments below because obviously I'm quite happy to keep doing them um, we're trying to give more and more a real picture of our day um, yeah we and just stand there and just chill yeah, and uh, yeah just chill and don't really do a great deal but <laughs> yeah. it's um, but yeah it's, it's just because obviously not many people and other channels they never show any of this where they're actually just having random chats in the day I mean we did one the other day with just me and Key and driving home just 
We weren't even talking about electrical stuff really, we were just talking about cars and buying imaginary houses and things like that, so a bit weird. So, like I say, if you do like the channel and you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on um, and give us a thumbs up if you like the video and um, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers guys, thanks for watching, see you in a bit.